Well hello, we're back with day 2 of the game jam. Today we're just going to continue to make the prototype of the game. I also joined the discord, quite cool discord, they already helped me out a bit. Alright, so instead of working on the puzzles, I'll first do the progress so we can actually finish the game before we do the puzzles. So what I was thinking is maybe have like 7 different points, start points, and then have them move towards the center and in the center they form a rainbow. Alright, something like this, and then we can have them all move in the middle, but there will be a lot of puzzles, and of course this will be larger. So I think I'll create a new script called Progress Controller and put it on the Game Controller. While my script's are loading, I'll just create maybe a trigger, so we can move the players to that trigger, or the characters to that trigger, and then we can finish the game somehow. Instead of having the Progress Controller on the Game Controller, I think I'll have it on the Finish trigger. It just makes everything a bit easier. So whenever someone enters this trigger we're going to do something. First I'll check if it is the character that entered the trigger because maybe later we'll add some boxes because later we'll maybe add some boxes and we don't want to trigger the events unless the character entered the trigger. So we'll check maybe if hit that transform or sorry if other that transform that get component we'll check for the character controller who is not equal to null so if it has a character controller it's probably a character yesterday in the game controller I created a private in character selected and I never changed it so I'll just go down here and uh, in before doing the for each statement I'll just go ahead and say select char or uh, character selected is equal to the character ID. So now we know which character we have selected and maybe now we want to destroy the character whenever he enters the trigger. Or maybe we don't want to make, we don't want to destroy, maybe we want to just disable him. So we can go other dot transform dot get component character controller dot enabled is false okay so whenever he enters the trigger we disable the character controller instead of disabling the character I think um, I can disable the player or the character movement I think that's uh, much better maybe in here I'll create a array of uh, booleans so I'll make it serialized field a private boolean array that will be called progress I'll make it a new boolean with seven variables I also want to, do, to get the game controller as a variable in that script we can check which character we have selected and whenever we do private void on trigger enter so whenever something enters the trigger we want to go ahead and say progress and then we'll give it the game controller dot character selected and that's it private so we can't get it yet so I'll just make it public and, and now we can go character selected is equal to true yeah so now it will get checked here and that's a pretty good way of uh, telling the game how much progress we have. Maybe later I can create a UI that will tell us that, but for now I just like this. Then I can create a new private void that will check if we completed the game, so it will be a check progress maybe, something like that. If character is equal to true, then we want to continue, so we want to see if the other one is uh, true else so if it's not true then we just want to return and maybe print like uh, not all characters reached the final point or something like that doesn't matter we can always change that later and I forgot to call that every time we enter a trigger so I'll just go check progress 
I think we can maybe use a for loop for this. Okay, maybe we shouldn't check for that here. Okay, so I finally did it and I realized that I was uh, overthinking it 100%. All, all I could do is just uh, not use any loops. You can just use uh, a simple integer to do that. And I don't know why I'm uh, so stupid. Do we actually need the private bool progress? I don't think we do, but I'll just keep it here. So if you learned anything from this, uh, don't be stupid and uh, don't overthink. Right, so progress controller, finally done. Now we can move on to puzzles. So by puzzles, I'll just maybe block out the level and that should be it. First I was thinking maybe we can have doors. So the red character will have a door, but that door can only be unlocked by an orange character. So the orange character will have kind of a pressure plate here, so he has to step on it so the red character can go through. We're doing. Maybe the door should have a orange material so we know like the orange player can change to that door. And for the rest we can just maybe create like a gray material. Now we probably need a script to connect the door and the pressure plate. Pressure the we then we want to open the door so we can go door dot open. And we should also create a private void on trigger exit. And again, well, on trigger exit, we should just go door script dot close door. So we start with the red player. Obviously, he can go through here. And then if we change the orange player, press on that, door opens, we can go through. That actually works pretty well. I didn't think that will work the first time. I think I'll stop here for today. We have two weeks and making these small steps I think I think is always better than uh, just doing everything. We did the pressure plate, the door and we also made the progress controller. I think that's a lot. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.